Hello and welcome to this TTRS webinar designed um, for teachers and tutors. We'll get going in a couple of minutes. I'm just going to wait a couple of minutes for other people who have registered to join us. While we're waiting, I'll be grateful if you can go to the polls tab and just answer the four quick questions there to give me an idea of who we've got with us today and how you're using or intending to use TTRS and then we'll get started. Thank you. Okay, we'll get started with the presentation and others can join us as they enter the webinar. So welcome to this training. As I've already mentioned, this one is designed specifically to support teachers and tutors working with students. My name's Liz, I'm a teacher, mum to a delightfully dyslexic son who has successfully completed the TTRS course quite a few years ago and is actually now revisiting TTRS to help with his preparations for GCSE exams in the summer. Um, I'm also a neurodiversity advocate and I strongly believe that everyone should have the opportunity to reach their own individual potential and I've seen personally and professionally how TTRS can help with this. In this training webinar today, we're going to be covering how TTRS can be used by teachers and tutors, introducing students to TTRS, monitoring student progress and giving praise, some of the key features of TTRS, including accessibility options, how to use TTRS remotely, and then there'll be an opportunity near the end of the webinar for you to ask your own questions, and I'll also explain where you can get further support. What I would say is if you have questions as we're going through the presentations, can you just jot them down on a piece of paper or remember them in your head if you've got a better memory than me? Because um, quite often the answers will automatically come out in the presentation. Um, so it just helps with the smooth running of the webinar. And then if near the end you do still have any outstanding questions, I'll let you know when it's time for you to pop your questions into the questions tab. Also, if any of your colleagues or parents of students would like a general introduction to TTRS, we do also run a webinar for that purpose, so please let them know they can register for that. So TTRS is an excellent tool for individuals with learning difficulties, and it was first created as a programme to help children with dyslexia learn to type. It's also a great platform for learners with dysgraphia, processing difficulties, attention difficulties, autism, and for those without any learning difficulties. The main TTRS course is CPD certified. So anyone who completes the full course, when they receive their certificate of completion, it will contain the CPD certified logo on there as well. And actually this webinar for teachers and tutors is CPD certified. So look out when you get your certificate come through from us and it will be CPD certified. So if you want to use it towards your CPD um, as evidence, you can do so. 
There's a lot of flexibility as to how you deliver TTRS to students, from setting them up and giving them time to work independently through the modules, to full supervision to encourage correct hand placement and posture, support them in focusing and using it alongside other teaching to supplement spelling and reading skill development. TTRS can be led by teachers, teaching assistants and tutors in whole class situations, small groups or one-to-one. -one. Please do have a look at our tutor manual for more detailed information about the different ways to use TTRS as a tutor, including private tutoring, online tutoring, adult literacy and small class sessions. We will include the tutor manual in a follow-up email. So if you haven't seen that yet, please have a look. It covers information specifically about TTRS, suggestions on to where, where to run classes and how to market yourself, financial information about the cost of TTRS, and also how you can earn extra money recommending TTRS to individuals, families, and schools as a TTRS affiliate. I know we've got some people with us today who are already using TTRS with students and others who are considering starting to use it. Hopefully everyone will gain something from the webinar today. So TTRS is a tool to help individuals acquire typing skills, but for many of our users, the main reason they're using Touch Type Read and Spell instead of other typing programs is because it's working behind the scenes to develop their literacy skills at the same time. So when they type, they're spelling out groups of words with similar sound letter patterns. They're also hearing the words spoken aloud, seeing them on screen and typing them at the same time. This helps to build spelling and decoding skills. The course also contains a number of high frequency English words, and this helps learners to build sight reading fluency as they go through the modules. And because TTRS modules are short, they help learners to build momentum and confidence on the computer as they progress through the course. Plus, TTRS has a free writing tool that helps new typists to bridge that gap between copying lines from the typing modules and actually using their newfound keyboard skills to type their own sentences and paragraphs. There are also subjects which, which can support vocabulary and key concept learning in a number of different subject areas, both school related and um, related to personal interest. And I'll talk more about those a little bit later. If you haven't started using TTRS yet, or you want to give a quick overview to someone else, the, um, the demo videos can be really useful. We have one is a demo of the first 10 modules in level one, and it gives you an idea of what it's like um, and prepares you to do a few modules yourself, which is a really good idea so you get a feel of how the program works from the student's perspective. I'd like to speak a little bit about um, getting set up on the programme. First of all, we recommend that you use Chrome or Firefox if you have those browsers available, as they'll ensure you can access the programme at the fastest speeds and with the best display and audio. Also, if your learner has access to an iPad, they can download the free TTRS typing app. It will work with the on-screen keyboard, but ideally we recommend using a wireless keyboard so that they can really get the feel of the keys. There's also a free iPhone and Android reporting app that you can use to help track your learners' usage and results. I know I often find it easier just to quickly look at an app on my phone when I'm waiting in a queue or waiting to pick up children or whatever it may be um, to see how everyone's doing rather than always remembering to log on and look when I'm at a computer. So feel free to download that and see if you find it useful. We will send you both our tutor and our teacher checklist to help guide you through the process of preparing to start TTRS with students. So let's talk about what you'll notice right away when you start using TTRS. TTRS teaches whole words. We present all of the letters of the alphabet in the first three levels. And once a letter is introduced, it's then immediately presented as part of a word. And that's because the nonsense letter combination drills that you find in other typing courses don't really help that much. 
if you think about it, when will anyone ever have to type JK, 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 JK in a real life situation when they're typing up a report or doing homework on the computer? Never. And actually, those key combinations can be really tricky and demotivating for learners with motor skills difficulties and dyslexia. So we think it's much more effective to learn how to type a key and then start using it in real words right away. Plus, the more you type a word, the more that movement pattern and sequence of keys becomes automatic. This is actually one of the reasons why touch typing works so well for individuals with dyslexia, because it bypasses the thought process and gets muscle memory to do some of the heavy lifting when spelling. Some of our users even say when they can't figure out how to spell a word when they're writing, they think about where their fingers would go on the keyboard and they're able to spell the word. Our established teachers and tutors have each developed their own ways of starting students on the TTRS course. Some initially start one-to-one, -one, particularly SENCOs working with students with more severe learning difficulties. Others start students immediately in a group. Either way, TTRS allows students to progress at their own individual rate. I mentioned earlier that we show students how to find all of the letter keys in the first three levels. You'll also notice some helpful voiceover explanation of how to set the hands on the home row in the orientation modules at the very beginning. There's a visual keyboard and hand guide at the bottom of the screen showing you which fingers to use to type which key. You can always go into the settings and change how the keyboard, the desk or the hands look. And it's also worth being aware that after level three, when your student starts to get the hang of typing, you may want to turn the hand guides off and you can do all of this in the settings. We also have a couple of posters that you might like to download, print and display to help students. Um, one shows the correct finger placement for typing. You can see we've got small versions of this on the screen now. And the other one is a good reminder of correct posture when typing. We've got some really useful guides and blogs on teaching typing with tips that can help in our TTRS online help centre and in the Read and Spell blog. So just type in your keywords, select articles about those things and then scroll down, have a read through and see what is helpful to you. Also within the online help centre, you'll find we do have some short video tutorials explaining how to do things. So things like how to add a student. Um, I've recorded myself adding a student so that you can visually see exactly how to do those things. It is worth noting that there are some learners for whom the correct hand position may not be that important. For example, we have quite a lot of learners with Down syndrome using the programme primarily for the literacy and confidence building benefits. And it's not always appropriate for them to stretch their fingers right across a um, full size keyboard. So hopefully you're already noticing that TTRS is very much accessible. I've explained about changing the keyboard, but you can also make a number of other adjustments to the interface under settings including putting the font in different formats, changing the background and copy text colors to help learners with visual stress, enhance contrast and improve text processing. You can also make the course one-handed for someone with a physical impairment. There are settings that help support spelling and short-term memory skills and work with motivation. And we'll go over some of these settings in more detail near the end of the webinar. Before I explain to you a little bit about the subjects that we've created in addition to the main course, a really important thing to know is what voice you're using the program with. If you choose a US voice in settings, you're going to have US spellings in the modules and vice versa for UK. Obviously, we don't want to cause confusion with spelling for people who may already find spelling a little bit tricky. So just make sure your students are using a voice that's appropriate for whether they're um, using UK English spelling or US English spelling. So aside from the main TTRS course, we have these subjects. And when you're signed into the course, you'll see them in the top menu bar. There are a range of curriculum school-based subjects such as mathematics, science, phonics, English, 
Um, for UK users, we go all the way up to GCSE level subjects. I mentioned earlier, my son is revisiting TTRS at the moment, and it's the GCSE subjects that he's using to help him really consolidate the key words um, and meanings of words and phrases relevant for specific subjects such as science, geography, uh, business studies and RE. We, for US users, we asked um, science and math teachers to create a series of courses based on common core material. On top of the school related subjects, we have also developed um, a range of subjects based on personal interests and hobbies. So we have subjects on the Olympic and Paralympic Games. We have a se whole series on neurodiversity. So subjects relating to dyslexia, ADHD, autism. And these subjects, as well as explaining a little bit more about um, dyslexia or ADHD, they also um, contain quite powerful motivational statements um, that can be really useful for people who are dyslexic or have ADHD. So definitely have a look at these and see what you think might be relevant for your students. One thing I particularly like about the subjects is um, students can be given a bit of independence here as to what which subjects they choose to do. So you may know that you want a student to do a specific subject because it will help them and you might guide them that way or instruct them to do it. But also you can um, you can give them flexibility to say, OK, choose a subject which you think will be relevant for you. And what I would say is don't worry if you feel a student is choosing a subject that's a little beneath their academic level um, because it will all be helping to consolidate their typing skills and increase their confidence um, on the keyboard and with their typing skills and their reading and spelling. These modules teach vocabulary and contain key definitions. We don't expect a user to learn the subject from a module alone but seeing, hearing and typing out keywords and concepts can be a great way to prepare for the year ahead, reinforce and support their current classroom learning and also review past material. It's also really helpful for learners with dyscalculia to have a multi-sensory way to practice with numbers and for learners with dyslexia to get more practice with hard to spell technical and scientific vocabulary. We usually recommend a learner completes level one, one to three of the main course before trying subject material to ensure they've acquired the necessary typing skills. And then you can make a decision based on what works for you and your student as to how they integrate the subject. So it may be that you say to them three times a week, I just want you to do the main course. Any additional times you go on to TTRS, choose a subject module to do. Or you may say every time you, um, go on to do TTRS, I'd like you to do two or three main subject modules and one or two, sorry, main um, TTRS course modules and one or two subject modules. So it's really up to what works for you and the students you're working with. This brings me now onto how long and how often you should um, have a student do TTRS. My best advice is very much little and often. It will depend partly on whether you're using TTRS as part of a weekly tutoring session, regular interventions in school, or encouraging the student to carry out some modules independently. Normally, we recommend students complete a minimum of three or four sessions a week and do two to three modules minimum per session. But this is a really general guideline and you'll need to adjust your expectations based on how well your student is doing, how it fits in with their other learning. And if you've got any set deadlines in mind, I know some people will be encouraging their students to learn to touch type so that they can use a computer as part of their access arrangements in an exam. So you'll have a set date in mind where you need them to have proficient typing skills. Typically 10 to 30 minutes of a typing session is absolutely sufficient for them to make regular progress. And one thing you absolutely want to avoid is a student who is tired but forcing themselves or being forced to stay at the computer because they'll tend to start making uh, more mistakes and this can be really demotivating. 
If you are running longer sessions, for example, as a tutor, consider breaking up these longer sessions with some kind of brain break part the way through and carrying out a physical activity. For example, for younger children, it can be really good to get them to stand back from the computer, um, stand up, sing and act out head, shoulders, knees and toes just to get their body moving, relax everything, give their mind a break. And then when they sit back down, they should be able to do another few modules feeling more refreshed. The idea with TTRS is to help build self-esteem and develop a growth mindset. Starting as small as needed, repeating two or three modules several times in a session, for example, until they feel good about what they're achieving and see the course as a positive is absolutely ideal. As well as having regular copy typing modules, you'll find that every fifth module is a dictation exercise where there's no visual. They hear the words and type them um, from that. You can turn these off by toggling the dictation icon um, on the actual module. So if they're too challenging, make sure your learner isn't using them until they're ready. Similarly, if you want to challenge a learner, you can make any exercise into a dictation. Dictations are a really great tool for building spelling skills and strengthening auditory processing skills. Another thing I'd like to mention is that most students will start at the beginning of the main course and then unlock modules as they go, which means they're prevented from skipping around in the course and they follow it in the order it was designed. However, if you would like to unlock later levels to allow a learner to choose different modules and levels to work on, if perhaps they already have good foundation spelling skills and they're doing really well at picking up the touch typing, you can do that in your admin account dashboard. You can also um, make your own modules using our subject creator and add them. So if you want to put a child's spelling list into TTRS or a list of words someone commonly struggles to spell and then practice them in a typing drill, this can be a really effective way to learn. I mentioned earlier that we have a free writing tool and this is an open interface which looks very much like a standard TTRS typing module but it's a place where students can type their own sentences and paragraphs and then get feedback on how many words are spelt correctly and the typing speed. Users um, choose the length of the session at the beginning, 5, 10 or 15 minutes and then you can actually leave feedback um, for the student afterwards on the work they've done. It's also um, a really good bridge to writing on the computer using their new typing skills and a great way to create cross-curricular links. So for example, if you're working on instructional text, you may ask your student to go into the free writing section and write a list of instructions of how to make beans on toast or the steps they take in the morning to get ready. The admin dashboard has been designed and tweaked following feedback so that it's um, as user friendly as possible and allows you to monitor your students progress, view their activity, add and remove users, handle billing and preview course content. Within the settings section of the dashboard, you can choose to receive weekly reports by email, such as the individual and class report shown on the screen now. Motivation is obviously key, and for some students, the trophies and certificates that they're able to earn when they complete levels can really add to their sense of achievement. We also recommend messaging students through TTRS to increase motivation. I want to make sure I mention again the importance of customising the course for your students and you can do this um, in the settings. So on the screen at the moment, sorry the typing isn't that clear in the image, but highlighted in green is my settings and any changes you make here will change how you view the TTRS course. Next to my settings is students. Um, when you click on there, any changes you make will act as a default setting for new students you add to your account. If you want to make changes for individual students, which you will do, when you're logged in as the student, go to the settings and you can make changes specifically for them to suit their preferences and needs. 
I'm going to explain a few of the customizable options now. When you're in the settings, there are lots of these little green um, question marks which have tips. So if you hover over them, it will tell you more about what those settings are and how to use them. So copy typing is when there's a line of text above and then when they copy the text out, it appears on the line below. When you turn this off, um, they will be over typing the line of text on the screen instead of appear it appearing below. Remember and repeat is a feature based on a popular classroom spelling strategy that has students read a word, cover it, write it down, then check to see how they did. It works by getting them to enhance their short term memory processing so they can hold an image of the word for longer amounts of time. And when this is switched on, the students see a word and type it, then it disappears and they must type it again from memory. It's really useful if you want learners to pay particular attention to spelling for a certain module. Under audio, you can get the program to read out one word at a time, three words or the whole line. We recommend one word at a time in the beginning, but you may want to change this to sentence level audio when a student becomes more adept. The praise button can be used to turn the applause sound that happens at the end of modules on or off. You can also have the backspace announcement turned on or off so errors aren't announced out loud. Lastly, for now, you have the ability to show typing speed in the results or not. We recommend in the beginning keeping this off for the first few levels to help a learner focus on accuracy. Otherwise, it can be really tempting to sacrifice accuracy to build up speed, which can be detrimental to learning in the long run. Throughout the global pandemic, face-to-face -face tutoring and teaching hasn't always been possible for many people around the world. So we pulled together some guidance and tips so that teachers and tutors can continue to support students remotely. We will provide you with um, our virtual tutor guide and also tips for teachers on using TTRS as a remote learning tool in the follow-up email, as we know that um, there are still occasions when people need to um, teach remotely. Plus also some tutors, for example, have now chosen to take this on as a normal way of working and regularly deliver tutoring virtually. Without being physically in the same room as your student, you will need to send clear instructions to them and possibly their parents so that they can access their TTRS account. We carried out some research into tools used by other teachers and tutors and provide some information in our guides as to some of the most widely used platforms such as Zoom and Skype to enable students and tutors to see each other during virtual lessons. Please know, as with any teaching, you should consider safety settings. So with the video tools you're using, please consider using um, the settings available, such as a password, so that only the student or students you've invited to that session can access the virtual room. Thanks to the TTRS administrator dashboard, it's easy for you to keep in touch with your students, man monitor their progress, offer feedback and reward them with praise even when you are not in the same room as them. Thank you very much for joining us uh, today for this teacher and tutor training. If you do have any outstanding questions now, please feel free to pop those into the questions tab. Before I wrap up, I want to remind you about our online help centre. If you need any help, there's plenty of guidance on there. Um, and as I mentioned earlier, we'll send the link for that along with all the other things I've mentioned in the follow up emails. We do have 24 seven support on the TTRS website, as you can see on the screen, the little pop up there with the hi there, how can we help and the waving hand feel free to type in keywords or questions there. Sometimes the bot will automatically reply with information to help, or if you need more detailed or personalized replies, myself or one of my colleagues, depending on the area of expertise you require, will get back to you as soon as possible. Please feel free to follow us on Twitter and Facebook to get information on system maintenance and also our latest blogs, which cover learning difficulties and literacy skills development tips, which are really insightful for education professionals. For those of you hoping to persuade your schools or tutoring centres to subscribe to TTRS, 
We're always happy to provide you with research, testimonials and case studies to prove the value of TTRS and more technical information such as the reading and spelling ages covered in the course. There don't seem to be any questions at the moment, but I will keep an eye out as I just finish off in case any questions appear. Thank you again for joining us and finding out more about help, how you can help your students to reach their full potential. Do look out for our emails with your certificate and the li links I have mentioned. If you don't receive those emails, particularly the one with the certificate, do have a look in your junk email as sometimes it can be delivered to your junk folder. My best advice to you now is to open up your TTRS account and give it a try. You can't break it and there's so much for you to discover. Finally, if you're on Facebook, please feel free to join our TTRS community where you can share ideas and ask questions from other TTRS teachers, tutors and parents, some of whom have been using um, TTRS for many years, some who are fairly new and discovering things. So it's a good way to share best practice and even celebrate success as well. Thank you very much for joining us today and have a great rest of your day. Oh, I can see there is a question just in time, just in time. Okay, I uh, can't find my account, got link reset. Okay, so if you've got it reset, hopefully you can now get into it. If not, please message us again. Um, and one um, and one of the team will be able to help you. I'm just seeing one other teacher there, but not me. Not I, That sounds like it's a school account and maybe your teacher account needs setting up again. Um, it may be that if you are having problems accessing your account, um, it's been deleted and then you need to be set up as a new teacher. So please speak to whoever is the administrator for the account and they can invite you as a student. Yes, from your response, it sounds like that's what it is. So whoever has the admin account, um, the admin login can invite you as a teacher and then you will be able to accept that. So if there's any problems with that, please get in touch with us afterwards, but it should be fairly straightforward now. Thank you very much and have a great rest of your day. Goodbye.